Hello guys, we are starting with a brand new chapter of organic chemistry where we are going to uh, begin with amine, amino acid and protein. So uh, this is what we are going to learn for this chapter. Uh, we are first going to study about nomenclature of amine, followed by physical properties of amine, chemical properties of amine, aniline and its chemical properties, and finally amino acid and proteins. So throughout the past question analysis, we find out that this chapter is an essential chapter to be studied because uh, almost every chapter comes out in all the past question series. <coughs> MS are derivative of ammonia in which one or more proton has been replaced with LQ or aryl group. So amines are best classified as primary, secondary or tertiary, depending on the number of groups attached to nitrogen atoms. So know that these terms have different meaning than when they were used to name alcohol. So a tertiary alcohol has three groups attached to the alpha carbon, while a tertiary amine has a three group attached to the nitrogen atom. So this is what it means by a primary, secondary, tertiary amines. So if you substituted one hydrogen with one alkyl, therefore primary. If you substituted two hydrogen with two alkyl, therefore it is a secondary amine. And you substituted three hydrogen with three alkyl, therefore it is a tertiary amine. So there is also a chances to form a quaternary ammonium salt under certain conditions, which we will have a look later. In common nomenclature of primary, mostly primary amine, they are all named as LQ amine. In systematic nomenclature, they are named by adding the suffix amine at the behind there to the name of the chain or ring system to which NH2 group is attached, with the replacement of the final E in alkene. Amine has a general formula CNH2N plus 3N, so for primary amine, it has CNH2N plus 1 and H2. Primary amine contain a more complex alkyl group are generally known as alkane amine. So with this approach, the amine is named much like in alcohol, where the suffix amine is used to be in place of O. While secondary and tertiary amine, however, has mostly similar approach to the naming of primary. So the alkyl attached to the nitrogen atom is numbered as N, and we have no differences compared to alkyl attached to the parent chain. So uh, here are a few examples of the uh, isomers for the first four carbon in homologous series of amine. So starting from the C, uh, first one, we have CH3NH2 methanamine. If you have 2C, it can be ethanamine, which is a primary amine. And if one of the alkyl is moving towards behind, then it will become a secondary amine. So this secondary amine is called as dimethyl amine. If you have 3C, there are, three, uh, there are four isomers. So the first two is a primary amine, namely propan 1 amine and propan 2 amine. Then if we move one of the alkyl to behind, so it becomes a secondary amine of n methyl methanamine. And if we have substitute another alkyl to the nitrogen, then you have a tertiary amine called as trimethyl amine or n dimethyl methanamine. If you have C4, there are more isomers that can form. So note that uh, unlike the one that we learned during alcohol, the classifications of the amine is based on the number of carbon surrounding the nitrogen. So here are the general naming of how we are going to uh, name all these amine. So find the parent chain of the molecule, one with the greatest number of carbon in NH2 and name according to the parent chain of alkan X amine. Identify the substituent in the parent chain, the substituent of an alkyl or halogen. So below shows some examples of the common alkyl substituent. So 1C for methyl, 2C for ethyl, 3C for propyl, and so on. So if there are more than one type of substituent, the naming, the naming arranged based on the alphabetical order. Number three, if there are more than two similar substituents, a prefix plays according to, accordingly. So if two similar prefix di, three similar prefix tri, four similar prefix tetra, Five similar prefix penta and so on. And finally, place the number of the substituent based on the position of the substituent in the parent chain. So if the alkyl are attached to the nitrogen, the number of the alkyl is labeled as N, like the number. So here are a few examples of the primary amine. So as you can see here, the longest carbon in here is six carbon. So we are calling and the NH2 is attached to the second carbon, so we are calling it as hexan 2 amine. Then you have methyl and ethyl. So something ethyl, something methyl. So the full name will be 3 ethyl, 3 methyl, hexan 2 amine. Another primary example is this one. So longest carbon is also 6 carbon, and the nitrogen is attached to the first carbon, so therefore hexan 1 amine. So if you have CH3, CH3, so and also CH2, CH3, so we are going to call it as a, a 4 ethyl, 3, 4 dimethyl, hexan 1 amine. So if you have another examples, so longest carbon here is also another 6 carbon. 
So in here, this is the longest carbon here. And NH2 is attached to the third carbon. So if you attach to the third carbon, you have three methyl in here and one chloro in here. So the full name will be 4-chloro-224 trimethyl hexan 3 amine And finally, if you have a cyclohexane in here with NH2, we call it as a cyclohexane amine, automatically it will become carbon number one. So you have two CH3 attached to the fourth carbon, so therefore 4-4-dimethyl cyclohexane amine. So these are all examples of primary amine. As for secondary amine, so if you look carefully at the structure, so uh, longest carbon in here that is attached to the nitrogen is this one. So all together you have, uh, sorry, go down, huh? you have go down. Okay, all together you have six carbon. So uh, this is a isopropyl and this is a ethyl. So uh, you are going to call the parent chain as hexan one amine. So isopropyl start with the letter I, ethyl start with the letter E. So they call it as three ethyl and isopropyl two methyl pentan one amine. We have two methyl. Okay. Two methyl in here. Okay. Then if we have three ethyl, uh, then if you want to name as three ethyl and three dimethyl pentan two amine, so this is how the structure will look like. Okay. And then for a tertiary amine, so longest carbon is still four carbon. Okay. So we can call it as a butan one amine. So you have a methyl, you have a methyl, and you have an ethyl. So you call it as a n ethyl. N N N three dimethyl butan one amine, and finally this is the parent chain, so cyclopentan amine. So uh, you have a methyl, you have a propyl, so N ethyl N propyl cyclopentan amine. So as mentioned in section earlier on the preparation of amine, a quaternary ammonium salt can be produced when excess halalutin is added to ethanolic concentrated ammonia under reflux. Therefore, naming of quaternary ammonium salt is, is also introduced below. So starting from the first one, if you have NH4Cl, we are going to call it as ammonium chloride. However, if all the four hydrogen is substituted by alk uh, alkyl, so it depends on the alkyl. So like in this case above, we have four methyl, therefore tetramethyl ammonium bromide. We have four ethyl, tetraethyl ammonium iodide. So this is how we name a primary of uh, quaternary ammonium salt. The next one that we're going to have a look is the physical properties of amine. So amines are moderately polar substance. They have a boiling point that are higher than those of alkene, but generally lower than those of alcohol with a comparable molecular wave. So molecules of primary and secondary amine can form strong hydrogen bond okay, to each other, while molecules of tertiary amine cannot form hydrogen bond. So, but they can form hydrogen bond with water molecule or other hydroxylic solvent. As a result, Tertiary amine generally boils lower at a lower temperature than primary and secondary amine of a comparable molecular make, but all low molecular weight of amine are very water soluble. So uh, when going down to homologous series, okay, the boiling point increase when going down to homologous series, this is due to the increase in relative pure mass, which increase the strength of the weight vanderwall forces. Now, if you have a compare, if all of them are isomer, so for example, if you have a propan one amine. Methyl ethan amine and trimethyl amine. So you can see that the boiling points varies. The boiling point so in here uh, we say that primary amine has the highest boiling point is due to hydrogen bond between the molecules are the strongest. So straight chain molecule has a larger total surface area compared to a branch chain molecule. Hence greater the total surface area, greater the hydrogen bond, higher the boiling point. However, tertiary amine cannot form hydrogen bond and hence form weak vanderwall forces so that the boiling point decreases significantly. So, uh, as for when compared to other functioning groups, you can see that uh, carboxylic acid still has the highest boiling point, followed by alcohol, then an amine, and finally an alkene. So, carboxylic acid has a higher boiling point, highest boiling point among them because ethanol acid has two hydrogen bonds within the molecule and form dimer within the two ethanol acid molecules, hence increase the molecular mass. Both propyamine and propyl-1O has hydrogen bond, but propyl-1O has a stronger hydrogen bond since O is more electronegative than N, while butane, being a non-polar molecule which is held by weak vanderwall forces, has the lowest boiling point. As for the terms of solubility, okay, so all low molecular mass of the L amine are soluble in water. 
So the longer the LQ chain, um, greater the hydrophobic properties, so the hydrogen bond will also become less significant, therefore less soluble in water. So you can see in here, these are examples of how hydrogen bond they can be formed with water for a primary and secondary amine. Finally, we are going to study about amine, uh, the basic city of amine. So amine is considerably a weak base, so when dissolved in water, it undergoes partial dissociation according to the equation. So this is the pKb. So given to you, the pKb of a certain values are here, 3.42, 3.27, 3.03. Then, if it is a secondary amine, then you have 2.88, 2.64 for tertiary, and then um, cyclohexy, uh, this uh, aniline is 9.41, and we have nitrogen attached to the aniline, so it's 9.58. Uh, 9 so, all alkyls are electron donating group which donate electron density to nitrogen in the H2, making N to be more readily to accept proton. Hence, equilibrium shift more to the right, increasing the basicity. So, longer the alkyl chain, greater the electron donating effect, greater the basic city. However, when compared to different classes of amine, so the basic city increased generally from primary to secondary to tertiary amine. So this is due to the more alkyl groups surrounding the nitrogen, greater the electron donating effect, when nitrogen has a larger electron density and are more ready to accept proton, causing equilibrium to shift more to the right, hence increase the basic city of amine. Fanny amine is a weaker base compared to alkyl amine due to the benzene ring is an electron withdrawing group. As a result, nitrogen amine has lesser electron density and are less ready to accept proton. So this result, the basicity of fanny amine is lesser than the alkyl amine. So when the ring activator is bonded to alkyl amine, it further activates the ring, cause the ring to be more readily to accept proton, hence increase the basicity. Conversely, if it is a ring deactivator bonded to a phenyl amine, it deactivates the ring and causes the benzene ring to less ready to accept proton, hence decrease the basicity. So with this, that is all for the first part of the video. So I see you in the next part. Thank you.